One of the more fun joints to cut at the table saw are box joints. Not only does the final product look really good with those alternating rows of pins and slots, but the process is pretty fun too when you're working on it, as you just step the pieces down, creating a series of notches. And when it comes together, it's like magic when they fit. The way to get those joints though, is to have a really good box joint jig. There's really kind of two approaches that I've found. One is the kind of make it on your own, quick and easy version, clamps to a miter gauge. The other is to go the full featured, high priced commercial route. I want to show you a jig that takes a middle path. Gives you all the features of a high priced jig, but you can build it in your shop in a small amount of time. The nice part is, is what you end up with is great looking box joints and a lot of fun spent in your shop. So let's take a look at this particular box joint jig. Now, like any jig, there's three things that we need to be taking care of here. The first is the size of our dado blade. That's going to be our starting point. Now, the dado blade is going to cut a slot into our workpiece, and that slot needs to fit over a key in order to space the slots and the joints out across the end of your workpiece. So this key needs to match the size of the kerf created by your dado blade. The third thing that we need to pay attention to is the spacing between this key and the blade. That spacing needs to match the other two as well. When you have those three all playing along really well, you know your box joints are going to fit together. When you go to make your box joint jig and you need to start making parts, the first thing to do is to set up the dado blade at the sizing that you're looking for. Here I'm using the two scoring blades on this set to create a quarter inch wide dado and then a quarter inch wide cuts. From there, I'm going to size a hardwood blank that is going to match that thickness. So I'll cut that dado on the end of a piece and then I'll rip some small strips that will hopefully fit in there nice and snug. You don't want anything that's going to be too tight because as we step it along, the last thing you want is that to have to basically pound it onto your key. So once you have that size, you can use one of them to create the key for the jig. Then you can use another piece of that strip as a spacer to set the distance between the key and the edge of your dado blade. Now on this particular jig, let's look at a couple of other features. One is that you'll notice there's this ledge that runs all the way across the front of the jig. That's where your workpiece is going to rest on. What's nice here is that as I'm going along making my cuts, the workpiece is riding along with the jig. It's not going to catch or snag on anything on the table saw top, and I'm going to have this really consistent action while I'm cutting those joints. Behind the workpiece, you'll notice this hardboard strip. Now it's designed to be a sacrificial surface. Depending on the type of cuts that you're making in your specific projects, over it, you're going to use different blade heights, all that kind of thing. And this backer piece is going to get reamed out, a little chewed up. And what that can result in is some tear out on the back side of your work pieces. Not something you really want. But what you can do with this one is back out the screw. We can flip the backer piece upside down, get double use out of it. It's also a good idea that when you make these, make a bunch of them. And then whenever you need to, you can always just replace the strip quick and easy. The other thing that I like about this jig compared to like the simple shop made version is that it's all contained. I don't have to find the jig, find my miter gauge, and then clamp them together and do the setup every time. This jig has it so that you can set it up, dial in and leave it. Next time I come to make these box joints, put the jig on the saw, I know that it's going to be right. And here's how that works. This front face of the jig is adjustable. There's a couple of knobs on the back here. You can see that they're anchored to some carriage bolts on the front. Uh, that serves another purpose that I'm going to get to in just a bit. But what I can do though is this stop on the end of the jig. There's a hole in the end here that I can pass a screwdriver through and it matches up with a screw that's on the end of the face of the jig. If I 
back out the screw or advance it in, I can make fine adjustments to the side to side position of the face. That way I can dial in for a nice fit of my box joints. So like I said, once this is all locked in place, I know that the next time I use it, it's gonna be all set up. Now the other advantage that I talked about with this is that right now we have it set up for quarter inch wide dados. But you know, say I wanna work on a couple of Christmas presents, make some boxes for friends and family, and I want those to be a little bit smaller in scale, so the finger joints there should be smaller too. This one has an eighth inch wide key in it. So if I pair that with an eighth inch wide rip blade, you know, one with the flat bottom teeth on there, then I can make those joints quickly and easily. Again, with my tuning screw on the end here, I know that when I swap these out, it's gonna be right on. Now say you wanna do larger projects. You know, here we have a, a 3 8 inch key. I mean, your dado blade on your table saw can go all the way up to three quarter of an inch wide. You can make them all at once or make just the face whenever you need to. It's pretty easy, piece of plywood, hardboard ledge, and the replaceable insert, and then you're good to go. Now let's talk a little bit about the jig base itself, because one of the key things when you're cutting those box joints, because it involves so much repetition, there's a few things you wanna pay attention to. One of those is making sure that the jig isn't gonna move side to side. Rather than being anchored to a single miter gauge, this particular jig has two plywood runners that go in the two miter gauge slots on your table saw. Now, plywood, especially three quarter inch plywood, usually measures a little less than a full three quarter of an inch. This is to our advantage here because we want the jig when it's all set up to slide smoothly. So the key here is that this wide block that spans those two runners matches the inside shoulder distance of the two miter gauge slots in your saw table. Now another thing that's going on here is that this block, if I flip it over here, is made up of two layers of plywood. That's to give you a solid anchoring surface when you screw these two side pieces or runners in place. But there's another benefit here. When you're cutting box joints, all your attention is up front in seeing where those cuts are, making sure your pieces are stepping along during the process. What can easily happen is that you lose track of where your fingers and thumbs are. But because of that thick block here, you can see the dado blade has cut into the block, but it hasn't cut through the block. That means this is a blade cover, adding a layer of safety so that you can pay attention to what matters most here, and that's cutting snug fitting box joints. Now the real payoff in a shop built box joint jig like this is in the results that you get. So let's get things set up here We'll cut a sample joint to see just how easy it is to work with and how much fun it is to use. Now what I have here is my jig all set up. I've used one of my work pieces, set it on the ledge, and then raised the dado blade so that it's just slightly higher than the thickness of my work pieces. What that means is when those box joints come together, they're gonna to be just a little bit proud. You can sand those off by just concentrating on the corners rather than trying to have to remove material from the entire side of each part of your box. I've also made a few test cuts with the jig to make sure that the spacing between the dado blade and the key is exactly the same. You want those three dimensions to match. So what I'm gonna do now is get ready to start on one of my work pieces. You'll also see that on this particular jig, I can flip around this backer strip so that I have uh, fresh support on the back side so that I'm not gonna get chip out on the back edge of my workpiece. For the first step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the workpiece on the jig, on the ledge, and right up against this key, and I'll cut a notch. After that notch is formed, then we start a little step over dance here. So we're gonna 
step that notch onto the key, make a cut, step it over, make a cut. You see where this is going. What I try and do is concentrate mostly on keeping it down and straight. You can really subtly add some pressure side to side and over the course of all those box joints, differences can add up and you'll end up with a joint that just doesn't really want to go together the way that it should. So we have our first piece and it starts with a pin on the end and goes across. You notice that I end up with this kind of weird little appendix pin down here that doesn't really serve a purpose. What it means is that I've left my pieces a little extra wide. That way I can come back once all the joints are complete, base it off of my one reference edge here, and then trim all my parts to match and have nice flush surfaces all the way around. Now the mating piece with this assembly can't start with a pin, it needs to start with a slot. So how are we gonna do that? The way to do it is to take our piece, flip it over, and put that right over the key. Now I'm gonna bring that mating piece in and slide it up right next to it. And you can see what's gonna happen here. Because I'm using this first piece that I cut as a setup block, now that first initial cut that I'm gonna make here is gonna be just a notch. What I'll do then is pull my first piece away, set it aside, now I can slide that notch over to the key, make a second cut. Then it's just repeating the process until we get all the way done. All right, here's the moment of truth. We have box joints cut on one end of each of our pieces and we can now fit them together. All right, that's what I'm looking for. It's something that I have to press together with my hands, but it will go together. And you'll notice they're just a little bit proud on each end. So that way I can just clean those up once the whole assembly is dry and after I've clamped it all up. So you can see it's gonna give me that really nice orderly look of those box joints. The box joint jig that I made in my own shop does a great job of making the process easy to set up, intuitive to fine tune, and just a lot of fun to work with. And I hope you make one for your shop. You can find the plans at woodsmithplans.com. Happy cutting.